Hey, when you look back on your life journey, what will you see in regards to your relationship with God? Will you see that you wandered, distrusted, doubted, left God primarily, like most essentially, that's the story. I'm not saying that we don't all do some of that, but will that be the theme, the dominant storyline? Or will you see time and time again the ways you chose to trust him and the ways that he came through? What will the story mostly be themed by? I'm Pastor Kerry. This is Growing in the Gospel, and we are slow walking through the Psalms. And I'm glad you joined me today because we're starting a new Psalm, Psalm 124. And I want you to join me there. For the next few minutes, we're going to contemplate, talk about, muse about, think out loud about the companionship of God and enjoying, particularly enjoying the companionship of God. So open your Bible to Psalm 124 as you're finding it. Let's remember this. We are engaged in the Psalms of Ascent. You'll see that this is entitled a Psalm of Ascent or a Song of Degrees. This one in particular is by David. And when you're reading the Psalms, we've seen this all the way through, you you need to think of it in sort of like three phases. The first phase is the writer himself having devotions, basically, and writing a song or a poem in worship and in private meditation and walking in solitude with God. That's the very first origination point of all of these scriptures. The second reality of every one of these psalms is that they became a corporate songbook and a body, a corpus of teaching and instruction about the heart of God and the relationship of a follower of God to God through all the situations and circumstances in life. We've said it so many times, the Psalms are the inside out view of the rest of the Bible. They're the inside out view of what the followers of God were experiencing in their emotions, in their spirit, in their internal world, in their psyche, uh, in their mental and, and, and emotional space with God. So the Psalms are brutal, they're raw, They go from the highest heights of joy and celebration to the lowest depths of despair, and they really inform us on what to do with all of our human experiences, what to do with all the hardship of this life and all the vulnerabilities and griefs and sorrows and heaviness that can come about in this life, as well as all the blessings and all the high moments and all the joy. And these Psalms teach us that God's heart, God's uh, life, God's, what, what should I say, God's character is absolutely durable and constant. It's a fixed reality. And so all of our human experience can be brought to him and laid out before him, and his grace can be brought to bear in all of it. And so this psalm today is going to kind of aim at all these themes. It's going to teach us to think again of God as a companion and as our constant, ever-present source of help. Now, a lot of believers or a lot of people are terrified at the idea of God being an ever-present companion, an ever-present source of help. But listen, ever-presence, the ever-presence of God isn't about you being in trouble. <laughs> it's about God extending his heart and grace and love to you despite the fact that you fail. In, sp- in fact, it's all because of the fact that we fail that we so need the presence and the companionship and the care of God. So the companionship of God, the imminent reality (coughs) that God is always present with us. We need that reality. It is a good thing. It's a source of strength and joy and durability. It is not a threat. The only way it's a threat is if you don't know God or if you are rejecting and running from him. If you're defying him, if you're trying to fight him and rebel against him, then then his presence is going to continually be a persistent source of agitation and conviction. But when you relinquish, when you surrender, when you come to God in faith and you're born into his life, he becomes a friend. And and all of a sudden, the threat that God poses is neutralized by his own grace. He chooses to neutralize the threat. He, He redirects judgment to Jesus on the cross. And all of a sudden, he puts you square in the sights of his love and grace and mercy, his endless, endless mercy, endless grace, endless, infinite, unconditional love. And that's where you live forever. That's where you, you become the object of God's love and mercy. The quality, the defining quality of your relationship with him is you are his by grace. You are his because you trusted the work of Jesus and Jesus is your savior. So in that 
reality, Jesus truly becomes not a threat, not a judge, not, not a shame giver, not a guilt inducer. He becomes a companion. His spirit, his presence, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit all reside with you and in you and walk with you in full, true companionship. This is what Jesus taught in the Gospel of John. He said, I'm going to send my comforter, and he's going to remind you. And then Jesus said, and I'm going to be with you, and the Father's going to be with you because we're all in each other. It's an amazing promise that God, Jesus basically says, we're going to have the totality of the Godhead, the Trinity, always with us, ever present in companionship, in love, in grace, in mercy, in resourcing, in making us able to go through today in, and coming to our aid, coming to our help. So the reason I started with you know looking back on your life is that today you're writing a part of the story. Either way, whether you're going to distrust and doubt and rebel against God and run from him, or whether today will be another chapter in the, in the story of trust, the story of telling how God came through for you. Okay, you're, you're, you're building an archive of stories. And the story is either going to be how you defied God, rebelled against him, and how he had to chase you down and chasten you, okay, or how you trusted and obeyed, trusted and obeyed, trusted and obeyed. Even when it didn't make sense, even when you couldn't see the way forward, you just continue to trust and obey and how God came through, how God made it work out, how God did what you didn't expect. And every chapter of the story of what God did will continue to surprise and delight you all along the way. And pretty soon, a decade or two or three or four or six or seven or eight will go by and you'll have a story. You will have written a story. And, you know, some parts of that story, I'm not trying to induce guilt or shame if you're older. Some parts of your story may be defiance, rebellion, running, wandering, whatever, failure or regret. So lay those regrets down at the foot of the cross and pick up a new chapter today and write a new story today. Write a story of trust today. Write a story of obedience. You have today. Tomorrow's water under the bridge. Do you know? Learn from it, but let Jesus redeem it and and let Jesus cover it if it's regrets. Let Jesus forgive you, and move on. Don't live in regret. Don't live in mourning and grieving and and looking back. Nothing constructive comes from looking back except for learning from it and doing something different today. So pick up the pen, live out today, write a new story today of trust. But either way, the younger you are, the more time you have to write a long story of trust. The older you are, the less time you have to get busy writing a story of trust, okay? So either way, we need to write the the correct kind of story today, and it begins with enjoying the companionship of God. So let's read this psalm together. All I'm going to do is introduce this psalm today, let you begin to muse on it, think about it. In the next three days, uh, we we will complete this psalm, and I think there's a lot here. So this is the journey, the pilgrimage. The Psalms of Ascent are the pilgrimage. The people are, are journeying to Jerusalem on their pilgrimage to the city of God, to celebrate his presence, to worship him, to feast before him, just like you and I are. If you know God, you know Jesus, we're on a pilgrimage. This world is not our home. We are journeying to the city of God, and we're singing and worshiping our way there. Every day, we're taking steps forward. Every day, we're one day closer to home. And so these are the songs they sang on their journey. These are the songs we can sing on our journey. And this song is about companionship and the help that God wants to bring us. So it says this, look at it, verse 1. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick. When their wrath was kindled against us, when the waters had overwhelmed us, the stream had gone over our soul, then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed Be the Lord, who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. So this psalm, eight verses, is a quick recollection. It's a quick glance back at the story that God has written in the history of the nation of Israel. So David wrote this psalm. So during his reign, you know, he's, or during his shepherdly life, maybe he wrote this out on a hillside somewhere. 
thinking back over the story of God. And I want to insert here, there's so much power, there's so much assurance and strength in looking back on the faithfulness of God in your life. And so maybe this is a good starting point today before we press into verses 1 through 5 tomorrow and verses 6 through 8 on Friday. Maybe the starting point today is you need to look back on your life and look at all the faith moments and the faithfulness of God. Look at the times that God came through in ways that only God could come through. Look at the junctures. Look at the moments that were defining moments that you had no control over. Intersections of people you met, decisions you made, circumstances that unfolded in your favor, ways that God provided or healed or rescued or prevented tragedy, ways he brought you out or through something difficult. We all have these stories, and the longer you know God, the more of these stories you're going to have, even though you have some regrets. You're going to have a lot of the stories of God's faithfulness. But think today through your story and look back and thank him for his faithfulness. Not long ago, I posted a video on the channel called The Rest of the Story. It was an uh, interview I did with my friend Tom, and I took that interview and chopped it up and added more information. And you know all it was? It was kind of embarrassing a little bit, but so many of you responded that you enjoyed that, that story. I think the version of the video that I posted ended up being like two hours, which is very unusual for me to post something that long on the channel. But Tom compelled me. He said, he said, Carrie, the story that you share is remarkable. It, it will encourage people that God still works, that God is still alive and active, and he still writes these stories when we trust him, even though we're fearful and doubtful and weak in ourselves, that he does still come through. I, I kind of shrugged and said, okay, Tom, if that's what you want to do, let's do it. I, uh, I don't want to glorify myself. I want to glorify God in these stories because I'm weak and trembling and fearful and insufficient and flawed. I fail. I struggle forward. I'm a growing Christian. Uh, that's about the, the top of my resume. I'm a growing believer. I'm following Jesus. Um, whatever good comes out of that is to his glory and his credit. He does it. So if God's doing good things from my ministry, praise the Lord. That's that's wonderful. I thank him for it. What I love to share, though, is how, how weak and fearful I was in the process and kind of kind of sometimes obeyed, even kicking and screaming, but God still um, receives struggling obedience. Is that fair? He still receives uh, fearful obedience. Uh, fearful faith is still faith. Struggling faith is still faith. Doubtful faith is still faith. When you obey the Lord in faith, but you're still uncertain or fearful or hesitant, or you're kind of doing it against, against all of your visible uh, promptings, that's still faith. In fact, I think that's kind of um, the essence of faith is, is that it transcends emotion and human will. It just, it kind of forcibly just chooses God and chooses obedience against reason sometimes. So it's well-reasoned in that God has a good track record of faithfulness. So it's the most intelligent kind of decision-making. But I'm talking about against, against reason of of our own understanding. Lean not to your own understanding, Scripture says. And when we start adding up, doing the math and figuring out the pros and cons, humanly speaking, we don't always see the outcomes. But we, when you enter the supernatural side of things, when you enter, when you induce or, 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 or insert the God factor into all of your calculations, now the impossible is possible. And now uh, mountains move and walls fall and tombs open and amazing things happen, but you've got to get out beyond human sight, human understanding, and you've got to get out into that supernatural faith space. It is terrifying at times. It is weak and fearful for us, and we like the feeling that we're standing on solid ground. we got to realize our solid ground is incredibly risky and vulnerable, but God's faith space, which feels risky and vulnerable, is actually truly solid ground. So, Anyway, it's long story short, I, I gave that testimony, posted that video. If you haven't seen it, maybe pull it up and watch it. It might encourage you. Um, but it was just the, a story of the sequence of events that led me into the senior pastorate and the restoration of the church that I presently pastor Emmanuel. And uh, I'm so thankful for the good work God has done. 
But I just want to tell you, listen, that just happens to be my story. There's nothing spectacular about it. I wake up and live my days just like you do. And every day I have to wake up and choose to follow God or not, choose to obey God or not. And when you string together 10 years of days where more of them you chose to follow God than not, you're going to look back and have a story to tell. You're going to look back and have some vignettes, some moments where God broke through with scripture or circumstances or God showed up in miraculous, supernatural, uh, indescribable, mind-blowing ways. You're going to have a story and it's going to sound like this. Oh, if God hadn't been for me, if God hadn't stepped in, if God wasn't on my side, I would have been swallowed up. My enemies would have won. Um, I would have lost everything. I would have lost my job. I would have lost my house. I would have, I would have been dead by now. The waters would have overwhelmed me. The streams would have gone over. Uh, the proud waters. We'll talk about all this. But that, what this psalm is, is David saying, if God hadn't stepped in, it's David telling the story. Don't you want a story to tell? God wants to give you a story to tell your kids and grandkids and to share on things like YouTube and whatever, however you can share your story. But first, you got to get out in faith. You got to follow him. You got to obey him. And so today you can start writing that story. And one day you're going to look back on all the moments you doubted, guessed, questioned, feared, anxious, all that trepidation. You're going to look back one day and say, blessed be the Lord. <laughs> That's verse six. Blessed be the Lord who didn't give me up to the prey. I didn't fall into the teeth of Satan. My, he, he broke the trap. He rescued me like a bird out of a, out of a hunter's trap. And if he hadn't, then I would have been dead meat. And wow, God was my help. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Do you realize this is the journey? I said we're on a pilgrimage, okay? This pilgrimage is a pilgrimage of God leading us uphill on an arduous journey, hazardous work, okay? Yeah, it's dangerous. Following God by human calculations is a dangerous prospect. It's, it's arduous, hard work. It's faith in, diff, in, in, in the face of traps, spiritual battles, enemies, things coming against you. It is not for the faint of heart. The faith life is not for the faint of heart. But it is the most blessed life. It is a life in the realm of the supernatural because you're putting faith and trust in, in God and you're, gonna, you're putting yourself in situations where God has to come through. And when you put yourself into the hands of God, when you take a flying leap off of the cliff of faith, you land in the gentle center of his palm and he catches you and he carries you forward. And one day you're looking back on those very situations and you're going, wow, let me tell you what God did. Let me tell you what God did. So let me just ask you this question, friend. First, a couple questions. Are you enjoying the companionship of God? Are you every day waking up, walking forward with him into the realm of faith and obedience, into the realm of the supernatural? Are you putting yourself on the path where God is leading and walking with you? Or have you left him in the dust? Because his arms are open, returning to him is as quick as repentance. You can resume the journey with God right now. You can begin the journey with God right now by asking Jesus to come into your heart and life and save you. He died and rose again for your sins to forgive you and to come into your life and give you his life and to bring you into companionship with him. He did the work. All you can do is believe and receive. So believe and receive today. And if you've already believed and received, then wake up every day and write the next chapter of your long journey home. And write that chapter in loving obedience. Jesus, you're my companion today. What story do you want to write today? I'm following you. I'm trusting you. Let's take the next journey. Let's take the next steps. If they're faith steps, they should be. Always, I will obey you. I will trust you. If you fail, repent. Get back on the journey. But listen. Don't be tired of the long, hard journey home. That's what it is. Because along the long, hard journey, you're going to have some breakthrough moments where God is going to sweep in and take your breath away. And when he does, you're going to say, blessed be the Lord. You're going to have a story to tell. 
So my challenge to you is with whatever life you have left, write a story that is predominantly a story of trust and faith and companionship. Write a story that one day you can look back on and say to your kids and grandkids, let me tell you about how God helped me through some really difficult situations. If you'll choose to write that story, you will absolutely enjoy the companionship of God today. So this is just the beginning thoughts of Psalm 124. Think about these things. Meditate on this psalm today. We'll pick it up here tomorrow. I want to remind you, the Dunn book is available at inthegospel.com. This is a simple, affordable resource that you can pass on to those who you love that you want to understand the gospel. It covers a very clear, simple, engaging gospel presentation. God's used this to bring, I think at this point, probably tens of thousands of people uh, to Jesus Christ through this little book. A lot of churches use this to give as gifts to their uh, guests that come, or we use it at our church as our first class for discipleship. It's a 10-week class that goes through this book on the gospel. And then I have tons of friends that buy these by the box and give them to their neighbors and coworkers and loved ones. Lots of people put this in stacks on their desks so that people, when they come in their office, can take one. Whatever God would allow you to do to use that book to give the gospel away, it's a resource I want to put into your hands to help you do the work that God's called you to do in loving people to Jesus. You can get it at inthegospel.com. That link I'll put on the screen. Have a great day, my friends. I'm praying for you. I love to read your comments. And so uh, maybe share the video and uh, stick around. We're taking some great journeys on growing in the gospel. Have an awesome day.